Hello, YouTubers, fellow hams. Well, coming to you live and direct from the southwestern Arizona desert. I'm here. I made it back to my desert. I love it out here. Uh, parked uh, in a fairly expansive area. Right now, there's not that many campers here, but they're starting to flow in. October is the month that they all start coming in for the winter, so it'll be very packed and busy before too long. Outside, I have uh, some antennas set up already. Um, I've got the NFED half wave going from the back of the RV over to uh, the top of a bush and down to another bush. It's about, uh, oh, 12 feet off the ground, you know, way too close to the ground, so it's an NVIS antenna, but it gets me out. I've been checking into some nets on 40 meters and talking to some guys on 80 meters at night and uh, or 75 meters at night. Uh, so it's getting me out. And I've got the chameleon whips up, of course, um, to give me uh, 20 meters up through six. And they're working well. And... Uh, a little extra thing that I set up, I've got a folded dipole for the FM broadcast band sitting out there. I think I took a picture of it. Um, I use it to uh, receive FM, of course, uh, FM broadcast. The little Yezu FT817 uh, plays uh, uh, many duties on this trip, but one of them is uh, entertainment. Um, I use it to listen to the FM broadcast band wherever I happen to be parked, find a radio station. Sometimes it's nice just to have a little music in the background. Uh, so anyway, the neighbors are probably wondering about this mysterious RV with all these strange antennas. And I'm going to put up another one. So what I've got going on today, in my shirt pocket, right here in my shirt pocket, I have a half-wave, two-meter J-pole antenna that uh, provides about 2 dB of gain over a standard quarter-wave ground plane um, antenna. So it's, uh, it's, you know, getting on par with a 5 8 wave uh, mag mount on the roof of a car, but it's very portable. As you can see, it fits in my pocket. Let me show it to you. This is it. I made a bunch of these several years ago. They're made out of TV twin lead, and uh, I've got coax with a BNC because most of the HTs at the time were BNC, but it just rolls right up. Like I saw, showed you, you could store it in your shirt pocket, and then you unroll it, and at the end, you've got a little hole where you can hang it from something, like a tree branch. Um, there's a cut there. I'll show you the design specs here in a minute. And then there's the uh, point where the coax attaches to it. But I'll show you a detail here um, on a website uh, with the design of this antenna if you want to build your own. So here we are on QSL.net on uh, WB3GCK's page and his article on the Twin Lead J-Pole. There are several. Uh, sources for this design. It's a fairly common design. It's been in use for years. As I said, I built several of these several years ago. Really easy to put together. Extremely easy. And he gives you uh, fairly nice instructions here on how to put it together. Um, under your uh, uh, supplies here, a 60 inch, inch piece of flat TV twin lead. Um, this stuff's a little harder to come by these days, but there's plenty of online sources for it if you go and look for it. He bought them from Radio Shack. I used to get rolls of it there, too. But uh, there's other places to find it. So pretty cheap stuff. Um, and he has a note here, don't use the more expensive foam-filled line. Uh, probably because it's more expensive, but also it's probably a little bit more difficult to work with uh, and, and expose the wires on. But he lays out the instructions here, and he's got measurements right here. Um, and we can see, if you, if you stick to these measurements, it's probably going to be good right off the bat on two meters. Let me just zoom in on this a bit. Uh, so uh, you, you cut a 54 inch length of the twin lead. Uh, he puts a little hole here in the end, and that's for hanging it. Um, you measure back uh, 37 and a quarter inches and you cut a one quarter inch gap in one side, okay? And that's creating the J. This side is the J on, here on the bottom. You join the wires on this end together, and then this side makes the uh, actual radiator. Now down here, one and a quarter inches from the end, you'll bear the wires on both sides, and this is where you'll attach your coax. The shield goes to the short end of the J, 
and the center goes to the long end. And this is one and a quarter inches, oops, can't do that, one and a quarter inches from the end. Now, you want to bear probably about a half an inch of the wire here, because to fine tune this thing, you're going to move that coax tap point um, down or up. Go for the center right at about one and a quarter inches at first, and when you've got it finished, hang it up and put your antenna analyzer on it and see what the impedance in the SWR is um, at the portion of the band you're going to want to operate at. You know, somewhere around 146 megahertz is a good point to try to shoot for a low SWR because that's kind of central to the active areas. Unless you're building this for like a packet uh, digipeter or, or packet station and you want it at the bottom end of the band, um, then you probably would want to bring this down a little bit closer to the end and that should um, uh, put you, well actually I think a little further away from the end would put you at a lower frequency. <laughs> closer to the end would bring to bring the frequency up but anyway that's really all there is to building this thing you can knock it out in no time at all uh, once you've got it uh, tuned where you want it to be oh and i should also point out that the length of coax is going to make a difference um, in the antenna's swr the longer you've got uh, the coax it's it, tuning is going to shift a little and you might have to retune it so um, you know, I don't know how much coax you're going to need for your installation. Um, six to ten feet is good if you're just hanging this up inside, a, you know, by a window or something in a house and you're going to your HT. Uh, it really, you know, it depends on, on your installation. But if you run a longer coax, the tuning is going to shift down in frequency. And that's because the coax shield here becomes part of the antenna system. Uh, so... You know, get the length of coax you're going to want and then make your adjustments there. Once you've got it tuned where you want it to be, you're going to want some kind of strain relief on this coax. You don't want it hanging on its solder connections. Uh, what I did on mine, and uh, this seems to work pretty well, is I slid a big piece of heat shrink down over it and over the end where the uh, coax is connected. And then I shot some silicone rubber inside of that heat shrink uh, to surround this whole area where the uh, connection is. And uh, I let that cure um, overnight. And then I applied some heat to the heat shrink tubing to kind of compress it down over that joint. And that does a couple of things. It provides a good strain relief for the coax uh, so that you're not going to pull those solder connections loose. And it also seals up the end of the coax uh, against water ingress, because if this is outside, you don't want water leaching down the braid of the coax and getting inside there. That'll cause it to start corroding, and that'll screw everything up. So you want some kind of strain relief, some kind of seal at this end if you're going to have it outside. I had uh, this particular J-pole that I'm using hanging outside the window at my house for years, um, exposed to the elements, and it still works great. It held up beautifully. Um, outside. So, you know, it does make a good external antenna provided you have this end where the coax is all sealed up. So I will put this web link um, in the video description down below so you can jump to it, but you can also just search for uh, two meter twin lead J-pole and you'll find many sites on building this. I just like uh, his here because this diagram is nice and clear uh, and easy to follow and the instructions are simple and laid out well. So uh, WB3GCK's uh, project notes on this antenna uh, are a really good reference source for it. Okay, let's get back to my installation. Now, what I'm gonna do with this, I've been using it here in the RV. I've just had it hanging from the ceiling near a window and it's worked okay for getting me out uh, to the local area when I get parked, um, but not very much further. You know, I mean, I can talk to people within a couple of miles easy enough with uh, five watts um, and hit a few local repeaters with it. But I want to put it external. I want something external up a little, um, you know, out in the open to get better range. So I'm going to take this twin lead J pole and I've got a length of three quarter inch PVC pipe, 10 foot length. I'm going to uh, put the uh, J-pole inside the PVC. I've got a couple of end caps here. 
One cap will uh, hang the top of the J pole inside there. The other will have a hole for the coax to come out of. And I'll uh, seal that up and it'll be long enough that I can slap it on the side of the RV and, and have the actual antenna be above the roof line. And to uh, put it on the side of the RV, I have these broom holders, these little clips that you would clip a broom handle into. And uh, I'm gonna mount those on the side of the RV and I should be able to just clip the PVC up into, the, uh, into these and then connect it to one of those pass-through connectors that I showed you in the uh, recent video to bring the antenna inside and that'll be my two meter antenna. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, you've seen the design of this thing. Uh, I built several of these. They're, they're great, great little portable antennas for two meters. Uh, I gave them away to a few hams in Fort Wayne. One who's now a silent key, Bob N9FM, uh, could hardly hit the repeaters with his HT from his sunroom where he liked to sit. Uh, but he hung this twin lead J pole up um, next to his window and hooked it up to his HT and he could get into every repeater full quieting even on half a watt. You know, it was a massive improvement over a rubber duck. So if you're looking for a good portable antenna, these twin lead J poles are the way to go. Um, they're, they, they're just so, they, they roll up so small, fitting in my shirt pocket, tuck it into the pocket of a backpack or whatever, just unroll it, hang it from a branch and you've got a really good two meter antenna. So a great portable antenna. All right, well, I'm gonna to get to uh, measuring, cutting, and so on with the PVC. I'll show you the completed antenna here in a moment, and then uh, we'll uh, put it up on the side of the RV and see how well it works. Here's the external view, and you can see the antenna clips up there just fine, clears the top, and everything looks good. Uh, the hole at the bottom where the coax is coming through, I left the hole there so that moisture would not build up inside with condensation. You don't want that. You want some air exchange. But to keep the bugs out, I did stick a piece of foam in that hole, uh, so we still have some air exchange, but no bugs. Uh, this is the top of the antenna. I sealed it with some uh, silicone rubber so that rain wouldn't come through where the screw was at. And the uh, clips on the outside are also sealed up with silicone rubber to keep the water out. To go easy on the batteries, well, because we have a very cloudy day today, I'm using my old Radio Shack HTX202, and honestly, this is probably what I'll use when I'm parked in the uh, RV areas to do two meters with, because five watts will be plenty, uh, especially with the external antenna. I've been scanning, and I have heard uh, repeaters from Kingman, which is uh, northwest of here, northeast of here, quite a ways. I'll put that up on the map. Haven't been able to hit those, but. Uh, I do have the local quartzite repeaters in here. If we go to uh, memory, there's 5.2. Here's one of the local repeaters, and I'm going to push this uh, button down here so you can't see it. It's right up here. I'm at a half a watt, 500 milliwatts, and no problem at all. And I'm probably, oh, 10, 10 or 11 miles away from this repeater. KB9 RLW testing. So yeah, it's working great. Um, I have a nice uh, external two meter antenna now. Quick and easy to put up, snap it in, I'm on, take it off, throw it in the back to drive, you know, so that fits the bill for what I needed. So there you go. That is gonna be my solution for an external two meter antenna on the RV. No need of a ground plane, um, pretty easy to deploy when I get parked. I just snap it up into those holders, plug it into the outside connector, and if I'm in a rainy environment, I'll tape the connectors. Uh, so anyway, there you go. That's my uh, portable two meter antenna for the RV, and uh, hope you found that interesting, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.